Hey guys, this is another exciting calculus video where we're going to talk about an intro to the formal definition of the derivative. Okay, so before I get into this, I just want to make sure you understand kind of why we need the derivative. So I'm going to give you some background. So I've got this function f of x here. It doesn't really matter what it is, but I just kind of drew it in a way that will help for um, demonstration purposes. And so let's say that I take these two points on the function a and b, and then I connect them like this. So this is what's known as the secant line, and this is something that you would have talked about in pre-calculus. And usually we get interested in talking about the slope of the secant line, which is this, which is also known as the difference quotient, which a lot of times you get asked to calculate in pre-calculus. Now, if you look at the actual definition here, so what is this h? Like I have given you a secant line in terms of a and b, and yet I am, I am presenting this in terms of x and h. So x usually actually refers to the, the a, the first point, and then h, h has to do with the distance between the two points. So what are your two distances? So this distance here, this solid distance, this would be what we plug in for h, and then whatever the x coordinate is here, we would plug that in for our x. So hopefully that, that kind of makes sense. So we have this concept of the idea of h, and we have the slope of the secant line, and this represents the average rate of change of a function. So what was the average speed or average pace, or however you want to think about it. Usually we think about it in terms of speed. To me, that's usually the easiest. Okay, so here's what I want to do. I want to take these two points, and now I want to just ask, what happens as we slide the points closer? So notice that I just kind of moved a closer, and now I'm going to move it closer again. And now I'm going to move it closer again. And so what does it actually look like that, that's happening? What if I slide them together closer one more time? Well, it's it's starting to look like the, the closer the points get, we're no longer talking about change over like average change, which means that, you know, the word average kind of indicates that there's a variety. It looks like the variety of change is kind of cutting down, and the closer that you slide these points, we go from what's known as average change to instantaneous change. So the exact rate of change, so think of it as the exact speed at a moment in time. So I want to continue to just slide these points even closer and closer, and so notice now how close I have these points. It's almost difficult to tell the difference between A and B. And I actually want to slide them so close together that we really can no longer tell the difference between the distance between A and B. So this right here, this would represent true instantaneous change. So when this happens, there is no longer a secant line, just to make this clear, it is now called a tangent line. So when we can minimize that distance between the two points. But there is a new problem with this. So remember, the seek or sorry the difference quotient this was the difference quotient so here's my question what is the value of h now so h is that distance between the two points well if you look at it this distance between the points it looks like it's zero ideally actually it would be zero and there's a problem with that right you can't plug zero into that h you can't have a zero in the denominator so this is kind of weird because you can clearly create this line, right? And and we can clearly kind of do this. So when you're in pre-calculus, usually it's like, how do you reconcile this? And, and you don't know how. But now that we're in calculus, I can tell you exactly how we reconcile this. Limits. This is the whole reason why you have to learn what a limit is in calculus, is so that you can reconcile this difference. So here's how we make this change now. We take the difference quotient. And we really just want to know what is the limit as h gets closer and closer to zero. Because that's effectively what's happening. It might not be that the points are directly on top of one another. I mean, ideally, that, that's really actually what is happening. But we're just thinking about this now mathematically as what happens as h starts to approach zero. What would this equal? And that now takes care of the whole issue. So this resolves the entire issue. So now we can actually talk about what this is. So this definition here is actually today's lesson. This is the definition of the derivative. So check it out. The derivative of a function f of x is this f prime of x. So it's this formula right here. So this is what you have to actually figure out. So there's actually two formulas for the derivative. And I highly recommend, by the way, if you're taking notes with this, which I always recommend you take notes with these videos, 
you totally want to write this down. This is something you've got to have memorized for probably any Calc 1 class. So this is one formula that you can use. And then there's actually a second one. This is what's known as the alternative formula. So this is another way that you can calculate um, a derivative. And again, I would write that down if I were you. And so naturally, there is a natural question of what formula should you use? And it's whichever is easiest for the problem. And I would highly recommend actually that you practice both. A lot of times I notice that students will just try to use one and then sometimes they get into a limit problem or they get into a derivative problem that's super complicated with one formula but would have been a lot easier if they'd gone another route. So if you practice both, then you can kind of start to recognize when you want to use each one. Okay, so there's a couple other things I want to talk about with this. Um, so I want to talk about the derivative at a specific point. How do you find this? How do you find the derivative at a specific point? Well, all you have to do if you're trying to figure out the derivative at a point is to plug in that point. And derivatives at points are actually incredibly powerful. They tell you a lot of things about the function. So I want to now make a list that I'd highly recommend you write down of four things that the derivative, that the derivative at a point, we'll call the point x0, four things this represents. So the first thing is that um, the derivative of a point, this is the slope of that function at that point. So a lot of functions, unless it's a, a line, so we know lines have slopes, but we never talk about other functions having slopes. But what they can have is a slope at a point, and so that's actually what the derivative tells us, is that slope. The second thing is that this, this also gives us the slope of the tangent line to the curve at that point. So we were just looking at a tangent line so we can kind of visualize what this is. And so basically if you have a derivative and then you plug in a particular point, you now have this slope of the tangent line. The next thing is that, of course, this tells you the, the actual value of the derivative at that point. So that one's not too exciting. And then this last thing comes up a lot of times when you talk more about physics. This has to do with the instantaneous rate of change. We'll talk about that a lot more in other videos, um, but I just want to mention that now. Okay, so I've been talking a whole lot. Let's take a look at actually a couple of examples where we use the definition. So I'm just going to go really briefly through a couple. I do have some other example videos where I break out more examples using each of the formulas. Highly recommend you check those out. But let's just talk about some of the basics here. So I want to calculate this derivative. So remember, here's my formula. So we'll use the, the formal or the, the first formula here. So you're going to have to have this memorized, particularly if you're in my class, but probably most Cal classes will make you memorize this. So what I want you to do actually is I want you to pause the video here and I want you to work this part out as far as you possibly can and then hit play when you're ready. So let's see. I'm going to plug x plus h into this. So let's see. I'm, I'm going to do this in two different colors. So this pink color will be for the f of x plus h, and then this green color will just be for the f of x. So this is going to be x plus h squared plus 2. It's a terrible looking 2. And then minus all of x squared plus 2. All of this divided by h. So now i got to work all this out. So let me do that. Okay, and so now you can see I went ahead and I uh, multiplied everything out. And then I collected my like terms. So what I'm ultimately left with is this 2xh plus h squared over h. So now I can divide h into each term. So really what I need to take the limit of then is the limit as h approaches 0 of 2xh, or sorry, just 2x, just 2x plus h. So as h goes to 0, the value of this derivative is 2x. So let me write that out f prime of x is equal to 2x. So we'll need to know that in a moment. Okay, so the next question I have here. Now I want to find the derivative of this function at this point. So this point is actually giving you more information than you need to know. So just notice that this point comes literally from plugging 1 in. So 1 plus 2 is 3, so that's the point here. You really only need the x coordinate for, for this. So we just found in the last exercise that my derivative was 2x. So if I want to know the derivative at this point then, I really just need to plug in 1. And so this will equal 2. So this does not just represent the derivative, and you want to repeat this to yourself over and over. If you just think of the derivative as just that and you have no other idea what it means, you're really not getting the breadth of, of the point of the derivative. The big thing about the derivative is that it represents slopes and rates of change. So you kind of want to repeat that to yourself over and over. 
So this represents a rate of change, an instantaneous rate of change, and it also represents a slope. So that's important because the last question I have for this is, find the equation of the tangent line for f of x equals x squared plus 2 at 1, 3. Okay, so we've actually done a lot of the work that we need for this. So we just said, right, that f prime of 1 was equal to 2. So this is actually the m that we need to create a line. So the equation of a line is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So this is the point slope form of a line. So remember what you need for this. You need the slope and you need the point. Well, here's my slope, here's my point. So this might be a good place to actually pause the video and finish this to create the tangent line. Hit play when you're ready. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug in everything into this and I'm gonna put this into slope intercept form. So this becomes, uh, let's see, this is two x minus two and then if I add three to each side. So my tangent line is given by two x plus one. So this is the equation of the tangent line then. So let's try to visualize this. So here's my graph, x squared plus one, and here I am at the point one, three. So this is actually on the graph. So remember the, the equation of the tangent line? So we just said that the tangent line was y equals two x plus one. So from this point, I should really be able to count out the slope, right? Go, I'll go up two and over one each direction, and then I'll also reverse that. So here I am reversing that point. Notice that we just nailed the y-intercept, right? It was two x plus one, so that means one is the y-intercept. And so if I connect this now, you can see that this is the one line that sits on this graph. It doesn't cross right, so it's the, the line that sits uh, perfectly on this graph at this, this point. Okay, so that's kind of the, the basic idea, and that's something you should be very, very familiar with in a calculus class. So the other thing I wanna show you is just some different notation for the derivative. So we have these two signs here, and we pronounce this as f prime or y prime. And then, and this is Newton, uh, this is N Newton's notation. And then we also have this sign here, so this dy dx. So the way that you pronounce this is the derivative of y with respect to x, and this was um, Leibniz's notation. So calculus was actually kind of the, the product of several different mathematicians. And, you know, back in the day, he didn't have Twitter or the internet to, you know, broadcast, oh, I figured out this thing called calculus, and here's the notation that we're going to use. So different notations were um, kind of created just because of these historical reasons. So this is another really common way to represent your derivatives. Like I said, um, it represents this, and it's just a way of, of another equivalent way of saying you've taken the derivative. These are three other ways you could, it's a very similar idea. Um, and then we also have these symbols here as well. Highly recommend that you have these written down, as well as, so this is not necessarily notation for the derivative. The thing I wanted to point out here is there's also this sign. So this bar means to evaluate at a certain x value. So if you wanna find the derivative at a particular value, this is an alternative way to represent that. Okay, so just wrapping it up here. Um, so a couple of things I wanna mention about differentiability. So differentiability implies continuity. This is actually a theorem. So this is a really great thing to know. If f has a derivative at a point, then f must be continuous at that point. Doesn't work vice versa. Continuity does not imply a derivative, but if you know that you have a derivative, then it must be continuous. And so it's probably good to also note then what won't have a derivative. So where won't a derivative exist? There's a couple places. And again, I'd highly recommend you write these down. So it won't exist at a corner a cusp, a vertical tangent, uh, at a discontinuity, and then at a YL oscillation. So in a lot of ways, these are kind of consistent with other things that we've seen in the past. So highly recommend maybe you pause the video and write that down. And otherwise, that covers kind of just the, the basics about the derivative and, and the definition and all that. So if you have any questions or comments, feel free to drop that in the comments of this video. I always read them. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.